much for joining us for SIB in Atlanta. It's hot out here in Marietta, Georgia, but we're at the governor's mansion, the, the estate, the governor's estate, and we're enjoying ourselves. Sergeant Corey Hambrick is here. His family is here. Sergeant, how are you once again? I'm, I'm doing real good. Listen, for those of you that do not know this young man, uh, you, you've made us all conscious of the, the phrase thinking under fire, not yeah. pressure. No. <laughs> Fire. I'm thinking under fire. Tough. Right, 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 T U F. Right, right. And tell everybody just uh just real quick, like in the ten seconds, what that's all about. Because again, we hear of another mass shooting in South Carolina. Uh and of course the police wasn't directly involved, but once again, members of the church need to know how to think under fire and they of course, Marcus, I'm glad you asked me that. Basically, thinking under fire is basically an alternative to um, responding to police um, violence or police brutality. Uh, what we had a vision to do was to take, actually, the conversation to education. Hey, if you want to see tough come to your community, you want to see tough come to your boys club, you want to see tough come to your high school, to your church, I just want you to follow that information down on the screen, and we will be so happy to come and share this wonderful initiative to you. We look forward to seeing you very soon. Um, a lot of times, if an officer is going to use um, lethal force, it's because uh, the incident or the totality of circumstances calls that he raises the level of his response so that, of course, he can be protected. And so what our young men and women need to understand is when you're faced um, with law enforcement in a lethal situation, you need to know how to act. You know, now is not the time to try to state your claim. Now is not the time to talk about how you didn't do it. When you're looking down the barrel of a gun by a police officer or a taser or a taser he doesn't know you so because he doesn't know you i teach you the things that you need to know of course that will keep you safe so that the law enforcement officer won't hurt you whether it's whether it's ethical whether it's legal or not we want you to have the information so that you can live marcus to see another day i celebrate that the fact that rockdale county is yes. taking a positive yes. uh lead on this issue yes. to change the paradigm yes of the brutality because right. it's not all brutality. No. No. We don't want to talk about that and, right. and I know SIB in Atlanta might take some some back flack for that but right. we don't want to talk about the disrespect the name calling and right. you know not showing honor for authority you know there's a whole lot of because but that does happen yeah. but we don't want to talk about it. Suffice it is to say yeah. tough if you want this to come to your school all the way from Rockdale County where commissioner uh, is over post one and in the community yeah. give him a phone number and the website you can go to www.thinkingunderfire.com. That's www.thinkingunderfire.com. Or you could Facebook us. Of course, we're on Facebook, um, Tough Thinking Under Fire. Or you can contact 678-964-1116. 678-964-1116. And they'll be able, to, of course, to assist you. And, man, we're taking this thing all over the country, all over the state. It's traveling. All the way from Rockdale County. We'll be right back. You're watching SIB in Atlanta. My name is Marcus Sled. Don't go nowhere. Tell a friend. Share this. We'll be right back. You're watching SIB in Atlanta, your special community report, keeping the spotlight on you. Your digital press corps reporting your news live and on demand. This is SIB in Atlanta. All of those folks from Rockdale County, Rockdale County, well supported and represented here tonight in Marietta, Georgia. Thank you so much. Your Southeast Web TV broadcast leader. That's right, SIBN Television and Radio Networks thanks you for watching. Stay tuned for a special exclusive interview with Governor Roy Barnes, the 80th governor of the state of Georgia. You're watching the relentlessly determined SIBN Atlanta News. So, Rockdale in the house. Give it up. SIBN Atlanta. Coming up a little bit later, you'll have an exclusive look at the interview that I've had with uh, Governor Roy Barnes, the 80th governor of the state of Georgia. But right now, I have a beautiful young lady. Tell everybody your name and how you're connected with the commissioner. My name is LaTanya Moore. I am a business owner actually here in East Georgia. 
So I met Commissioner Nesmith probably about two years ago. He is a master networker. So he definitely has been very instrumental in helping me to get my business off the ground and also making a lot of business connections here in the community. But tell everybody a little bit about what you do and, and how they can support you. Give them some contact information. Well, you can go to my website. It's www.opcoach.tv. We do event brand product management. I also do business and strategic planning for small businesses in the area. Check us out. And uh, on Facebook, Instagram? You can check me out on Facebook, Latanya Moore. Also, you can check out me on Instagram at Latanya Moore and Twitter at Opcoach. Hey, more coming from the governor's house right here in Marietta, Georgia. You're watching SIB in Atlanta. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Hey, didn't you have a book out or something like that? Yes. Uh, live like a what? Live like a... It's called Live Like a Champion, Discovering Keys to Unlock Your Door to Destiny. You have your copy? Oh, I, I don't have a copy. Where do you get it at? Oh, well, you know what? I actually have a copy right here that I can share with you. Oh, okay. Was that guy with TMZ? Oh, no. That's actually a guy with SIB in Atlanta. He got his copy, guys. So you get your copy of Live Like a Champion, Discovering Keys to Unlock Your Door to Destiny. Get it today at www.latanyamore.com. Thank you so much for joining us for this special edition of SIBN Atlanta. I have with me Governor Roy Barnes, the 80th governor of the state of Georgia, the beautiful state of Georgia. Uh, just real quick, we want to get his thoughts on some of the things that have been happening, good things. Governor Deal is on board with this Confederate Reformation uh, yes. of sorts. It needs to go further. But talk a little bit about the incident in Charleston, uh, South Carolina, and how that affects Georgia. Charleston, uh, I'm 67 years old, and I have never seen anything that shocked and appalled me more. I mean, just think about this young fella. 21 years of age, filled with so much hate. I just don't see how you did it in 21 years. He went and he told the police that they were so kind to him at the church, even took him and got him something to eat at Burger King. And then he said, I almost didn't kill him. And then to come back and have that racial hate that takes nine lives. And I think that it was a wake up call for everybody in the South and in the nation, but particularly in the South, that it's time to get rid of these uh, racist symbols that he relied upon uh, to kill nine innocent people. So I think that uh, if there's a silver lining in all of it, uh, I think that it's created a crisis that is going to change the way we look at the Confederacy. I mean, listen, the, Confederate, the Civil War was fought to preserve slavery. And you know, those that say it was not, uh, you know, I, I tell folks, I've read those ordinances of secession from the southern states. I don't see one word in those ordinances that said, well, we're seceding because the tariffs are too high. It's all about slavery. And I think it's time to move on for that. It was part of our history. I had a great grandfather that fought for the Confederacy. It's time to move on from it. And I think this is the catalyst. What happened in Charleston is the catalyst that's going to make sure that happens. Some of the grand, I have to be objective because some of the grandkids and great grandkids of those Confederate soldiers, though, are wondering, well, Governor, how are, how are we to celebrate the fact that we had family that actually fought in that Civil War? What is your best advice to the young people who are asking those types of questions? Uh, well, I had a great grandfather that fought for the Confederacy. He uh, was captured at Vicksburg, as I said. Uh, he was not wearing a blue uniform when he was captured. Uh, but I recognize, we recognize that he fought valiantly. He was not a slave owner. Uh, he fought valiantly, but he fought for the wrong reason. And there is a place to honor those folks. I don't think that you remove the Confederate symbols from every place. I think in museums, in Confederate cemeteries, and memorials, those are altogether, um, you know, appropriate. But to say that we have a Confederate Memorial Day, where at the same time we don't even have a day that uh, celebrate a holiday that celebrates the founding of Georgia, it seems to me to be out of uh, kilter and just not appropriate. I, I, I saluted you on that stance, but you've 
This is a long history with you. When you were governor, you've taken a lot of stances, caused you, in, our, in some people's view, to lose the election. I was sad when you left office, but I think your hope still prevails because we see Governor Deal. I never thought he would come around on a lot of issues. Uh, uh, what is your stance on the Republicans and the Democrats still working together for the state of Georgia, for the people of Georgia? Well, I think it's, it's absolutely important, and I, I commend Governor Deal. As I said, uh, he's a cautious fella, but, uh, and I know him very well. Uh, we served in the state Senate together for years, and, uh, but he's, he's, as he works through it, he will be there. One of the things that I tip my hat to him about is the reexamination of all of these mandatory sentences that primarily catch uh, African American young folks that make a mistake and send them to jail for 25 years, and so I, and he's he's criticized that and he's taken efforts to try to change that, and I, I commend him for it. And I think that as we go along, um, that they can black and white, Republican, Democrat, can work together. Now, here, here's one of the things. Uh, I think that Republicans, there's a lot of things they can do on civil rights and on prison reform. If I had tried the prison reform he is, I would have been accused of being soft on crime. It's almost like Nixon going to China. They can take up some very difficult problems that we should have been taking up for some time uh, because they are Republicans so, and get a great response for it. So uh, as they mature in their leadership, and I see that, uh, I say that in a nice way, and I see it that they're maturing in their leadership, I think that we can right some of these wrongs that for too many years have just been ignored. Last question, but Georgia has always seemingly taken the lead in the South to me. I'm, I'm, from, I'm not from Georgia, I'm from up, up north. But it seems historically that Georgia has always somehow at some point taken the lead where other states now have to get on board with some of these mainstream issues that not only affect African-American issues, because if it affects me, it affects my neighbors who are, are white or Caucasian or Hispanic. But, but set, talk about the leadership and the historic aspect of Georgia taking the lead in the South. Well, we've, had, we've been blessed on some great leadership. We have a large, the largest city in the South, the largest uh, you know, metropolitan area in Atlanta. And we've had some great leaders in Atlanta that reached out, both white and black, that reached out and made this transition and coined the phrase, the city too busy to hate. And I think that has helped. And then we've had some good governors. Governor Harris, for example, uh, you know, established the, the MLK birthday. He appointed, this is uh, 30 years ago, he appointed the first African-American to the Court of Appeals, the first African-American to the Supreme Court, uh, long before any of our southern states ever took that stand. Uh, Governor Miller, uh, f f you know, came forward with the changing the flag. He failed, and it almost cost him an election. Uh, so I think that it is the history of leadership that we've had here. It's been easier for us to do because we had the Atlanta region. Well, thank you so much because yeah, you got a great party. Listen, he's got a great party going on here for Senator Walker and Commissioner Nesbitt, but thank you so very much. Beautiful home, beautiful family. This is SIB in Atlanta. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you either on location or at the news desk.